Hi all. Just before we get into the other King's Engine game between Tau and Fischer in 1959 in the Yugoslavia tournament where actually Tau won all four games. He joked actually about signing uh, the score sheet with Fischer's name as well as um, his own because uh, he'd, beat, he'd beaten him so many times and, and the right to do that is a bit cheeky but uh, no, I think Tal and Fischer were, were on, on good terms like friendly terms. Um, now let's see this Petrosian system. It's actually d5 is the third most popular move according to Chess Gamescom. We're talking about less than a fifth, like compared to the mainline castles. So d5, and we've been seeing knight bd7 from Fisher, which is like the second most popular move. Uh, so a5 is, is what I mentioned before, like with the idea of maybe knight to d7 or a6 to c5. Use the c5 square. But knight d7, and then we have this bishop g5. It's an annoying pin. So how is the pin broken, um, or is it allowed for white to play queen d2? Usually people will, will will try and kick the bishop immediately. So h6, and the bishop is often going to h4. So from h4 later, the knight will swing round for f3 and bishop f2. So we usually have g5. Now Fisher's move is a6. So that represents one quarter of the played games, a6. Uh, we should be able to hit on actually the Fisher game. Uh, maybe queen e8. We'll transpose into it. We'll see it with like knight h7, b4, tell like Fisher games like here. So we see bishop f6. Um, <clears throat> but there's also the other way of playing it with knight g5, which will hit the other um, classic. Uh, Fisher game, so Tal Fisher here, so with Bishop F2, so closely related games. And I thought I'd show you that on the Chess Games Com opening explorer. So I don't mean to make a huge advert for the Petrosian system uh, today, but um, for the King's Indian uh, followers on Facebook, this maybe is interesting in knowledge about uh, D5 here. So it's not without um, its exponents, um, quite a lot of uh, high-level exponents. Um, so in the in the A5 line, let's just make sure that um, one of the key ideas uh, remains, I think, um, for H6 actually, but also this Knight A6 or D7 to C5. So say um, Knight A6 and Queen D2, would that be a problem? Here, Queen D2, maybe you see Knight C5, and there's counter play against E4. Also, White maybe wants to play Knight D2 and, and put the Bishop on F2. So using the Queen for D2 might not be the best. Um, but we see here, look, you see like knight c5, five, five games, but first kick the bishop and then maybe knight c5 coming up, like queen e8 um, first is most common, so knight d2, alright, so knight c5 is actually delayed, pardon me, so knight h7, a3, yeah, may, maybe the point of leaving the knight on a6 actually is just to try and restrain uh, for as much as possible the, the queen side advantages of white. So bishop d7, this is more flexible than putting a knight on c5 actually. Uh, so even that there's a threat of like a4 potentially now, because the queen and bishop are lined up for a4 to restrain the b-pawn here. So anyway, a little bit of background on this Petrosian system. And let's see this other um, game then. Okay, I hope uh, that puts it in context. Okay, so in this encounter in the same tournament, um, the King's Engine idea uh, that Fisher uses is not this early bishop f6. Uh, he deviates. The first few moves the same as the previous game we just saw on YouTube.com King's Crusher. Petrosian system of the King's Engine. So that's the early bishop d5. Sorry, the early d5. Um, so knight bd7. So this annoying pin, it's kicked immediately with h6, the bishop. Uh, now we see a6. Okay, just depri depriving uh, a knight b5 so in the future when white, you know, plays with c5 maybe. So knight d2. So with this move, um, the intention is often to play f3 and bishop f2 just to eye the queen side. Still play for that thematic break. Exploitable part of the pawn chain is d6. So queen e8, castles, and now knight h7, getting the f pawn ready maybe. But also there's the option of knight g5, which might be dangerous in its own right. B4, and actually knight g5 is used, bit of pressure on e4. 
Now Tau reacts with F3, and then we see the classic F5. I think white's um, slightly better here. It's always uncomfortable when this queen side has been torn apart with moves like C5, and that's been prepared for now. Bishop F2, Queen E7, maybe against C5 to try and discourage it, putting some, some pressure on C5 indirectly with the queen. Rook C1, but now Knight F6. Okay, so there's some pressure on e4 being built up from these bo both of these knights. c5 and now bishop d7. So at the moment, because of that a6 move, you know knight b5s have been ruled out, which means cd cd loses some effectiveness to try and attack d6 or get into c7. Uh, if white can get the light square bishop, then that will be the end of black's attack usually, because he really needs that bishop to be able to sacrifice often on on h3 forms an important uh, attacking resource quite often, the light square bishop. Um, so queen c2, uh, so that's um, reinforcing control of the e4 pawn, which means one of these knights might be ready to spring in, for example knight c4, to attack the chain like that from c4. Um, knight h5, they're releasing the pressure off e4, heading for f4. So it looks quite kind of aggressive. Maybe a lot of players will be scared now, facing uh, this aggression. But Tal continues on the queen side. He doesn't mind uh, a, a sack on c5. That's for sure. I think this would be a disaster for Black. Uh, I believe because of takes and knight b3, at the very least, regaining the pawn kind of comfortably. Let's just do a quick engine check. Just, for, just technical interest here. Um, so if takes, I think yeah, b takes a6 is given, but now b6. But even so, here this would still be better for white apparently with knight c4, because there's threats now like d6, and you could undermine like more pawns. Uh, in fact, f takes and d6 is is quite a, a structural uh, lot of damage here. So you can imagine this position. The knights coming in with tempo, regaining pawns, and that I don't know. That's it's almost given as like equal actually, but that's this is an interesting variation. But it's not taken. Black wants to focus on his side as well. He doesn't want to be totally like distracted, so probably didn't even consider that. Um, he just takes on e4. In fact, he wants to establish a knight on f4, which would be good if it were like royal pairs. You know, like royal pairs, knights on f5 or f4 are often very dangerous. Uh, for the person's king, uh, so taking on e4 now, and now knight f4. Now this is interesting, actually, that f takes e was was used, not knight takes e4. Let's let's just get a theoretical evaluation on this, because usually uh, in the king's engine, getting a knight to e4 is a very attractive uh, thing. This would be an advantage to white as well, even if it loses the b5 pawn, rook b1. That's another kind of Positional sacrifice, which is uh, the position is strong enough for all these positional sacks on the queen side here. Um, so this this would be a slight advantage for white. Black's pawns are not going anywhere. White's got uh, beautiful possibilities here. Um, let's not take that further though. So knight takes e4 was possible. F is another good move, probably fractionally more appropriate. For the position, well, just about the same evaluation though. So allowing uh, a seemingly aggressive knight on f4, engine off. But then we see c6. Okay, so Fisher threatens a mate in one. Okay, Bishop f3 defending against the mate in one. Now Fisher takes on c6, takes, and now Bishop g4. So what can be done to defend g2 here? Tell simply takes, and then he moves his bishop out of the way to defend g2 with his queen. Knight h3 is not a major threat here. The king can just sidestep, and that wouldn't be a problem. So a takes b5, and after bishop takes f4, e takes f4. Um, why would Tell give away his bishop and extend the scope of this bishop? That's a good question. It's the knight. I think he's judging the knight to be slightly better here. And if the bishop can still be blocked in by its own pawn, if a blockade can be set up on f3, then there's going to be uh, problems. And like I um, illustrated in the previous game, 
which is actually meant for this game. If if black can be tied down to c7, if he's like protecting, then f7 is also a target now on this diagonal and the f file potentially. White can use the f file and try and just get to black's king like this. Uh, so knight takes b5 is the start of the tying down to c7. Uh, resources are tied up now, rook f7. Okay, so queen c4, pin. And you'll note now that if, if white can like double up rooks, he'll be threatening rook f4 of the, of the pin. Um, also, of course, with the pin comes knight takes c7 as an immediate threat. So again, something has to be done about the poor c7 pawn here. So this is a bit of a miserable position, not being able to move the king. Uh, so pin and win is being used here as a concept. Rook c8, two whole rooks tied down, tied down by knight and queen here. And furthermore, you know, will this bishop have scope? Well, it's it's hemmed in by its own pawn, which is now subject to attack via the actual f vol. So bishop e5, rook c f1, and if king h1, then g3 will be a threat because of that pin, you know, f7. So king g7, and we see actually first a4, and if this pawn comes up to a7, it'll be another menace to deal with. So uh, rook a8, stopping it going even one step further. Now that the pin was broken with, with king g7, knight c7 is no longer on. King h1 introducing the idea of g3. Queen g5. Okay, so g3 is played now. Queen g5 didn't really do anything about that. Rook a f8. So maybe this is uh, what Fisher thought would, would be okay with him because surely he's got four pieces here eyeing f4. What could go wrong with f4? You might ask. Tell takes on f4. There is something going wrong uh, with the knight. G takes f4 and here unfortunately for Fisher this does seem to be a terrible position uh, because um, if rook takes f4 then there might be knight takes c7. Uh, to e6. Now I wasn't able to engine check this in my analysis last night, but I'm going to now. Rook takes f4. Um, I believed that knight takes c7. Yes, this is crushing. Absolutely. Because rook takes f3, check, winning the queen. And not, um, well, it's, here will be winning the queen with check. So say that the king moved to h8. Not knight takes g5, because uh, then rook f1 check. But here, rook takes f3 uh, is is crushing, absolutely. And this is a position I showed last night. There's no check. If rook takes, then knight takes queen. If the queen moves, then rook takes f8. So that's what Fisher had in mind. Um, he doesn't win the queen immediately because rook takes f1. Black's actually winning that. Um, so. Um, so that's pretty nasty stuff that knight takes c7 would refute rook takes f4. Um, now, uh, okay, so bishop takes f4 was played in the game. And this, unfortunately, the weakness of this last move is that now the d4 square can be used. So knight d4 threatening again this horrendous, like, family folk, um, king, queen, and rook, and bishop. Um, but the worst one is the queen, so that gets out of the way. But now comes uh, an ingenious uh, move. Uh, maybe it's actually not needed. Maybe just a simple um, check would have done, apparently. For some reason, I thought this was uh, kind of ingenious. Um, let's, let's see what Tal played. He played rook takes f4. And after rook takes f4, check. And now, um, not simply, uh, you know, taking um, on f4, that's that's no good. This intermediate check is a killer, this queen d4 check, uh, forcing uh, one of the rooks to be pinned. Because if the king moves, then queen g7 is mate. So by forcing one of the rooks to be uh, sadistically pinned to itself, then it's a disaster. You know, for example, rook f6, then knight takes f8. Uh, if the the queen's not 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 any better because uh, here rook takes f4 and then there's an intermediary check and then taking um, to be a knight up. Uh, so whatever way, it's a total disaster now. Black is is losing uh, material. 
Uh, but the interesting thing about this, maybe this, this wasn't even needed. You know, maybe um, just just knight e6 here apparently. Uh, so say king h8. Oh, again, we're we, we're just going into the same variation, I believe. The key thing is this check, this nasty check. Very, very nasty because the rook and knight are coordinating on f8. So anything is losing here. This one, just knight takes f8. Uh, you know, this one. Then just rook takes f4. Um, is is sufficient? That's that's uh, strong. Uh, rook takes f4. And if if check, um, just th these checks run out. They run out here. But uh, let's let's. So the game continuation is is a disaster as well. Of course, after the check. So knight takes f4. Is played not um, rook, rook takes f4, which is also strong, but uh, so you might wonder, well, what, what's uh, Tal doing about knight? It just simply plays e5 to protect it and open another line <clears throat> against the king. So d takes and now check, and, and it's all over here. A piece up. Uh, here's an example of what could happen uh, if king g7, then knight e6 check here is uh, pretty crushing. Say so king f7, queen d7. We're mating on um, g7. It's all over. It's a piece up anyway. So another kind of demonstration that this Petrosian system against the king's engine uh, is not really giving much fun to black on the king side. Uh, the way Fisher's is playing it, especially with this a6. Um, so as I said in the previous video, I think a5. And get the knight to a6, but I'm not necessarily committing to knight c5. Just trying to create a bind, you know, on on a3 and b4 from white. Uh, so I think that's the more modern way of playing it. Okay, so knight to h7. So we saw queen side pressure, uh, leading basically to um, a commitment of defensive resources, just just to try and keep hold of c7 soon. So that's that's the point of this particular queen side attack. If it's not like infiltrating, if no knights are infiltrating, um, there's there's a tying down to the poor c7 square. Once these uh, immediate tactical threats are dealt with, um, we see this bishop takes f4 move. Uh, so that gets rid of a, a major uh, black defensive, sorry, attacking piece. Technically, what black was actually okay here, according to Houdini. So I wonder where the key blunder is. Black was slightly better. And this is an amusing uh, non-biased engine move here. In order for black to maintain a small advantage, apparently the move king f8. And black would be slightly better, according to Houdini. If a4, no, it's gone to about equal now after a4. I think the potential of this pawn's too strong, really. Because this rook's already tied down to an a pawn. It doesn't need to necessarily this pawn to be tied down to. So I think uh, white's um, doing fine. If this has to happen, it's starting to get ridiculous. So anyway, another rook was tied down. White's clearly uh, getting the advantage now. And he's got a concrete target to aim for, this poor f4 pawn. So he's aiming for that f4 pawn, and he's going to prepare soon the move g3 to exploit that pin. Now here, again, uh, another an idea is um, Queen h5 apparently, and I wonder if that does anything for g3. Ah, g5, yes, g5. So maybe that's another little finesse which could have been used. Okay, Queen h5 for g5. Um, so Queen g5, just g3. The pressure is increasing now. The white's advantage is going up technically, bit massively now, after this continuation. Knight d4, it's a winning advantage. So Black's best was. Um, Maintaining um, the pin, just ignoring it, just ignoring recapture, just queen g4. But again, white's like doing fine. Maybe f5 is, is getting pretty nasty. So it went downhill quite quickly now after this knight d4. Lots of uh, f forking opportunities. Um, and this intermediary check is an absolute killer in this position. Uh, whatever way, rook, this one to f6, rook 8 to f6, rook 4 to f6, c 
queen f6 they're all failing queen f6 is rook f4 and f takes rook f8 rook f6 rook f4 is even working as well as um a knight f4 everything's working for white tactically here so knight takes f4 and now e5 this this is uh, sufficient okay um uh, please leave any comments or questions on YouTube and check out the relevant Facebook pages uh, facebook.com slash Fisher Chess Fans and facebook.com slash Kings Engine Defense. Thanks very much.